It's the beginning of a new week, and all of you know what that means. We have a new historical figure for us to indulge in a little bit of uh, introspection and enjoyment of significant figures in computer science history. Today's figure is Andrew Yao, the, 2000, the year 2000 winner of the Turing Award and a very prominent Chinese professor. An interesting part of his story is that he was born in Shanghai, after which he moved to America to complete not one but two PhDs, one from Harvard University, not in computer science but in physics, and then a subsequent one, where was it, uh, at uh, the University of Illinois, uh, yeah, UIUC in Chicago. Um, and after quite some substantial time in the United States working on computer science theory, in 2015 he actually renounced his US citizenship and moved back with a Nobel Prize winner to his home country of China which had quite significant in and interesting ramifications in the world of computer science. Andrew Yao is known for a couple of things. Among them is the formal theory of pseudo-random number generators. So we don't talk about, we're not talking about it so much this year, but the basic question is what does it take to get a computer to produce a number that you can't distinguish whether it was the computer that generated it according to some algorithm or whether it was pulled from the random mysteries of the universe. If you had an actual random number generator that the universe was creating for you, can you tell the difference between these two things? And those were the major contributions of um, Andrew Yao and also the Dolev Yao security formalism, which is a way of representing computer security using algebra, which is a super fascinating topic. And I would encourage you to check out more about him if he's one of the figures that you're particularly interested in. At the end of last class, we had a brief segment on the best way to distribute Hamilton tickets. And we settled on first come, first serve was probably the uh, fairest way of going about this and is the way that we really use it. But we wanted to find a data structure that would match our intuition about how we should structure this. Our first, uh, our first try was using arrays, and we'll do a demo of that in a second. And then when arrays turned out to have a couple of challenges with them, we looked at linked lists, which we'll look at uh, two different particular implementations. In particular, linked lists can be implemented using an array, but we'll also see in this class a way to implement them using pointers, which will give us much more flexibility and the ability to avoid some of the pitfalls that we saw with our array construction of linked lists. So I did tease that we would have another demo down on the floor last week. So let's go ahead and do this for arrays, test number one. So I would like a queue of five people, please. One, two, three, four, and I need a fifth. You ready? So you don't even need to put down your books and settle in. You can just come right, right down to the front. OK, and if all of you would stand over here, and you are our potential Hamilton ticket buyers. And I need one special volunteer who is going to be the ticket office. Can I have a ticket office? Yes, Tarish, come right on down. And Tarish gets our wonderful police helmet. Okay, I want a clump, a clump not a line. We'll, we'll get to the line in a minute. Nice clump. Okay, so let's say it is 9 a.m. in the morning and we are going to be putting all of you in an array depending on when you arrive. So could I please have number one uh, at index zero in the array, whoever wants can come first and line up bright and early in the morning. Unfortunately, the ticket office is not yet open. Let's, let's stand about here. The ticket office is not yet open and so the first element in the line is still there. Okay, number two, wait a minute. Where do you go? If this is an array and our first slot is already filled, uh, go, to go to the second slot. That makes perfect sense. And we have someone else who wants a Hamilton ticket. Lines up. And one more. And we've filled, sub we've filled consecutive positions in the array, each next to each other. Now let's say that Albert decides that actually, no, he'd rather go and see the sound of music. So he leaves the line. But what happens to our array? You'll notice that we have an empty space here. And so um, let's, uh, we'll, we'll take it from the crowd. You can just shout it out for this time. What do we have to do? What was your name, sorry? Nash. Nash, is that right? Yes. Okay, so what does Nash have to do if we're gonna keep our data structure intact? Yeah, move over one. Okay, so we move over one and we have to copy one element from over here 
to over here to represent how our line has changed. Um, now, remind me your name again? Mahin. Mahin. We have met a couple of lectures ago. Anyway, so Mahin comes along and also wants to join the queue for Hamilton. And now finally, I'm sorry, Albert, you're off at Sound of Music, but the ticket office is open. So Tarish, summon up your first customer. That would be Noah. And Noah leaves the line. Now what happens, see what's happened over here. Now we have a hole in our line. Our memory has a gap. So what do we do with wider? Yeah, we move him over one. We copy him over. And what do we do with Nash? Nash also gets copied over. And Mahin also gets copied over. You'll notice that to remove one thing from the front, we had to copy over everyone remaining in the array. This was a little inefficient because now when Wider goes and gets his ticket, we have to copy Nash and Mahin all over again. So move over. Well, you, you only moved over one spot. You haven't gotten a Hamilton ticket yet. No, I'm sorry. And uh, unfortunately, Hamilton is a very uh, expensive and prized show, and so the ticket office is now closed. I'm sorry, you two will have to go join Albert for Sound of Music next time. OK, but this doesn't seem like potentially the best way that we could be representing our data. There must be a better way that doesn't require all these copies. And this is what we're going to look at with pointer-based linked lists. And I still need all of you, because we're going to keep up this demo in just a moment. So we need two ingredients to make this work. Ingredient number one is going to be a pointer inside the struct definition that points to another one of the same struct. So if each struct represents a ticket holder standing in line, their name, their age, where they're from, all the details you need to put in on your Hamilton ticket, we're going to have to give each of these people a link to the next person in line. And then when they leave, we can just change the way that they're linked together. So if I have a link to the next person in line and the person behind in line, when I leave, if we fix those links up, it, we don't need to copy everyone all over. All we need to do is change the links. Let's see how this works practically. Um, at each, in our struct, in addition to the link we're also going to have, I mentioned the student data. And this gives us a struct definition that looks something like this. A given node in our data structure, a given individual that's complete with both their identity and a link, we can represent using this little piece of code. We'll have data t, which will represent whatever the data is that we're going to store with them. In this case, it might be the name of the ticket holder. And then we will have a pointer to a node. And you'll see that we've declared the node up there. And so we're kind of giving it a pointer to itself. But we have two problems with this. First is that I've called this a node instead of a node t over there. But you can imagine they're the same. But the second is that when we get to the node t over there, the compiler doesn't know what it is. So we're going to need to let the compiler know. And how do we let the compiler know about the type of something before we've used it before? Yeah, yeah, show at the back. Yeah, we need a prototype for this. So let's uh, fix that up. How does the compiler know? We have a prototype there. So now we have a type def that says uh, a way of what what the node is, uh, what a node t is, refers to this struct that we're about to see over here. So we have, uh, we've let the compiler know ahead of time to expect a definition of a struct node, and that that's going to be our node t. And so when we refer to a node t pointer in there, the compiler knows what it is. So now we're ready to actually see how this is constructed. Fortunately, I have brought along a few props to help us out. So each of our Oh, that's a very unflattering angle. <laughs> Each of the people in our ticketing is going to have a node. Oh, I do have enough for everyone, thank God. One. And this little node that I've given them looks just like a PowerPoint, but trust me, it's a C, uh, it's a C struct in actuality. And we're going to find a way to link them together. So where did I put my? bag of props. So uh, who, was, who was first in line last time? Was it Noah? Noah, you were first in line. OK, line up. Uh, and you need, you need your node. You need to hold out your node because and stand in the place you were before. Right? Noah is the start of our linked list over there. And all the data about him is contained in this C struct over here, this node. Now we have someone else who comes along. It's Wider. But now Wider doesn't actually need to stand next to him in memory. Wider can stand wherever he likes. 
because to tell the computer that these two things are connected, we're going to use a pointer. And remember the difference between a pointer and an array is a pointer can be in a different location in memory to the thing it's pointing to. So white is going to stand round about here, where I, where I am, and we're going to give him a pointer. And so his pointer is going to go from his node. You can plug it in. And the pointer goes, whoop. Let's fix that up. And you can uh, plug that into Noah. You can unwind it a little and plug your pointer in. And now it doesn't really matter where in memory Wider was standing. He doesn't need to be consecutive because if we know where the front of the line is, we can follow it all the way to Wider, even if he's not in the next position in the array. We dereference the pointer, we dereference, 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 and we're over here. Okay, now who is next in line? Albert, you were next, or Nasha Mahin? Albert, you were next in line. Maybe, maybe you'll get to go see the show this time. Okay, so Albert now lines up and wants to join as well. So the first thing we have to do is we follow from the start of the line and we go to where WIDA is. And from WIDA, we're now ready to build the next link in our chain. Uh, Albert has the uh, data stored in his little node. Hold up the node for everyone. That contains his ticket holder information. And now WIDA says, okay, you can join the line. We'll add a pointer from you two and you might have to fix that up. Okay, we've got two more links that aren't quite ready. Yeah, Taris, you can help out with the last one there. Okay, Nasha's now ready to see the show, except we have to find out where the place is for her to link up to. So assuming that we only know where the start of the line is, because that's where our, uh, our ticket office is, we go from the start of the line, we go to the first struct over here, we follow it all the way along, and now we get to our next node. We see that this also has a pointer attached to it. We follow it along. We're here. And now we know that we can attach the next node by creating another pointer and attaching it to Nash's node. Nash? Yeah. Nash, sorry. <laughs> OK. And I will leave that to you guys to sort out. And you know what, I'm feeling a little bad for Mahin as well because she hasn't gotten to see it yet. So we'll add her to the, to the link list as well. We follow along, see the, see the start of the line, follow the link, dereference. We're at the next one, dereference, dereference, dereference. And now finally we're at the end of the line. And there we go. Now you get a Hamilton ticket too. Okay. So now let's look at how we actually do operations on this. So we've seen addition to the end of the line. How about addition to the front of the line? Um, Mahin, let's uh, unclip you from Nash. Let's say uh, that Mahin is actually a, are you a bit of a cheater sometimes? <laughs> no? Well, for today you will be. Come over here. We're going to skip you right to the front of the line, right? And so we have our, wait a minute, we have our old head of the line. How do we replace who's at the head of the line? And um, let's, let's take this with a microphone. Mahin, you're going to get directions from an audience member. Claire, are you feeling up to it today? Nah. OK. Google, we spoke last time. You ready? Was it Josh? OK, Josh. Um, so hold both of those and remember that this is going to be for the recording. Um, so Mahin wants to get to the front of the line, but we already have someone at the front of the line. Um, yeah, Liam, you might have to do a quick swap in a minute. Um, so how do we replace who's at the front? I guess it's just she needs to point to Noah, and then that's fine. Yeah, so if Mahin points to Noah, She is now actually at the front of the line as long as we keep track of the fact that she's at the front. So Tarish over there has been busy keeping track for us who's at the front of the line. He's going to shake his finger at her for cheating. Very bad, Mahin. But now we do have a new front of the line. What about if Albert, well, 
No, Albert's going to see the show today. What if Wider decides that today he wants to see Hello Dolly instead and wants to leave the line? How are we going to do this? Uh, Noah has hold, to, hold it up. Noah has to point to, is it Albert? Is yeah, Noah has to point to Albert. So let's follow along. If, we, if, only, if the only thing we know is where the start of the line is, help me track through how we're going to do this. So we start at Mahin mm -hmm. at the very start. And then what do we do? Go to Noah. We dereference and go to Noah. Then we're going to skip the center one, go all the way to. So we keep track of where Noah is. Yeah. Then we, uh, we what do we do? Oh, are we not? We're skipping him. We've taken him Yeah, wide. we're skipping yeah. wider and. Go to Albert. Yeah, and what do we do with our links? Um, hmm. Well, Noah has to point to Albert. Albert has to point to. Nash? Nash. Yeah, Albert still has to point to Nash, but the key is that we have to change this, these two links in the middle. We have to change yeah. the links that go between Wida and Albert. Hold up, your, hold up your link for everyone, for those who can't remember your, your names. And we also have to change the link between Noah and Wida. So hold, hold that link up. That's the green, green wire. So if Wida's leaving, mm -hmm. we have to somehow take that green plug. And where do we put that green plug? Into Albert. Yeah, we put that green plug into Albert. And Wider doesn't actually need a pointer anymore. He's yeah. now out of the line. What about removing the person from the very end? How do we do that if we want to remove Nash? Uh, you just remove the pointer to the Wait, wait a minute. We only know where the start of the line is, because Tarish has been keeping track of that for us. So what do we do? Well, we're going to track it all the way down. So we track all the way down. We go from Mahin. We dereference. We go to Noah. We dereference. We go to Albert. We dereference. And then we end up at Nash. And what do we do? We get rid of it. But do we get rid of the link when we're at Nash or? No. Nah, we get rid of it when we're at Albert you, because yeah. the pointer goes from Albert to Nash. So you see we've disconnected. And now what, what would be a good way for us to keep track of who Albert points to if Albert's at the end of the line? What value in C do we have that typically represents? Null. Exactly, null. So Albert is going to hold out his arm and just point to the dark great black beyond <laughs> over there. Right? Some, somewhere out there is the great null. Um, and so this gives us an idea of how linked list operations work. Thank you very sure. much. Josh, can we have a round of applause? And let's, let's trace this with some code and actually uh, see how this works in a more concrete way. But this should have given you at least a sense intuitively for how it works. Mm, we're leaving them. OK, so how do we iterate through the linked list? Now, Tarish for us is going to represent the pointer P in our code. And we're going to actually step through this. So Tarish over here is our pointer. And we are going to run the process each function. So while P, are you currently pointing to something? Yeah, we're not pointing to null. This is a valid value. So what do we do? We call some function process. Oh, let's, let's take the microphone so people can hear Tarish. We call uh, process each. Um, yeah, we'll call process yeah. each, and now we check that you're pointing to something valid. Yeah. The next line, what's on line? Uh, process uh, P minus. P minus, minus angle bracket data. So what oh, that yeah. is, remember, that's our yeah. syntax for accessing the member of a struct pointer. So that just tells us what data is located at Mahin. And we already said the data that's located at her in this example is going to be like her, her name and all the details we need for her ticket. So process is just going to be Tarish's way of allocating her a Hamilton ticket. Process can be whatever function you like, whatever you're doing with the data inside the struct, that's our process. OK. So we've, we've finished processing her. We've given her a Hamilton ticket. And now what do we do? Uh, increment. So, uh, Explain that uh, in, a, in a bit more detail. Give me a full sentence there. So then update the value of p to be next. That moves to the next structure. Yes. Yeah, so this says go to follow p oh, next. P to the, it's, it's and remember, pointer. Yeah, yeah so and remember this syntax is a little like dereferencing. Yeah, so uh, dereference uh, p to go to p go to what p is pointing to. Yeah, and so you are p. So let's let's see you do this. Okay, so p equals p next. P next. So then. No, no, no you're still p. Okay. Your identity hasn't changed, but the value your value has changed. Okay. So what is p next? P next is it was the pointer the that pointer. she contains. Oh, the pointer that she contains. So and what structure. pointer does she contain? Where does that go? Noah. To Noah. And Goes to Noah. Noah. OK, so let's, let's move along. So, okay. Yep, and now you're pointing to Noah. You're, uh, 
you're still P, but now you are oh, yes. connected um, to Noah. To Noah. And yep. then, so then, Let's go back to the top of our loop. So then while P, so that is two, Noah's point, so is yeah. uh, Noah valid? Yeah, so he's, because he's not pointing to void, so yep. he's still valid. So then I move to the next one. Uh, well, first, uh, so first, first I have to process P, so I have to give him the Hamilton ticket. And then I uh, move to the next step, which is P next. So point to what he's pointing to, which is Albert. Yep. Now we move to Albert. And once I reach Albert, do the same thing, give him a Hamilton ticket, uh, move to the next one, and then I realize that he's... Wait, 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 keep, keep going. You go to the next one. It doesn't, there's no if. You just go to the next one. Okay. Now he's pointing to the void. Yeah, and so, so now we're in the void. So that means that while P is no longer true. Yep. Um, so I just exit. The, and you're done. I get the loop, yeah. Yep. Okay, thank you very much. That gives us how to iterate through our linked list. But now we need to do the same thing, adding someone to the front. So now, uh, Nash, how do you feel about doing a little cheating today? We're good? Okay, so Nash is also being added to the list of naughty students, and we're going to add her to the front of the list. So how do we start this off? Tarish, keep, keep walking me through, because you're our policeman here. <laughs> um, so no T's point. At the, at the start, oh, what is, what is, what, what's the first thing we're doing? Uh, star, okay, wait, so I'm dereferencing push. Is this a dereference or oh, is it a declaration? Oh, it's a declaration of a pointer, push. Um, well, that, that's the function oh, signature. Sorry. This the, this is called push. I'm sorry, okay. I should have specified that I'm, first. Uh, okay, so I'm declaring node t, which is uh, a pointer new. Yep. Um, new is equal to node t. Okay, so, I'm so what does malloc do? Rem uh, remind remind a, the class. Malloc allocates a specific amount of memory for this variable. Yep, and how much memory are we allocating? The size of uh, new, which we, which is the pointer that we uh, yep. define. So let's create our wonderful new chunk of memory over here. <laughs> Nash, do you want to come over here for a minute? Yep. And now, what are we checking? Um, In our next line, it's line this, line five. Uh, uh, I'm asserting. New, um, which is Nash. Yeah, this is just a test yeah. to see if the memory yeah. allocation worked. Yeah, yeah. Okay. just to see if it works. Yeah. Now, so then I give new, uh, so the new person, I give the ticket. New well, you're not giving her the oh, ticket no, I, yet. You're just filling oh, her information. Okay. Remember, each node's data, Nash, you want to turn towards the, the crowd. Hold up your node. Um, and we are filling the node with stuff, whatever ha that happens to be. That was oh, the yeah. data that we're filling it with. Okay. Yep, and now what do we do? Then I, so then I move to the next one from no, new. No, wait a minute. Oh, no, sorry, I declare P as new. So remember that each of our nodes has two places where it can store data. One of the places it stores like the student information, sorry, the ticket holder information, and the other piece of information it can store is a pointer to the next element. And so what are we doing in line seven? I'm so new has storage, and one of the storages is called data, and one of the storages is called next. So the data is the structure relating to the person? Yeah, that was the, the yeah. ticket holder information. And next is the ticket itself. Next is the pointer. Oh, the pointer. So uh, I have to define where she's pointing. To. Yeah. yeah. So and so where does she point? P, which is, and, yep. which is me? Yeah. Mahin. Oh, Mahin, yeah. So. Yeah, because remember, uh, you were, yeah, you're, I'm, you're I'm keeping track for us for where yeah, it is. So, so then I define. That and now what do we do at the very end of this function? Then I return new, which is um, sorry, Nash, right? Yeah, so I return new, which is Nash, Yep, and which now is... we know where the head of our list is because we return back from the push function our new head, who is Nash over here. So this gives us uh, one more of our operations. This one is push, which is, a language, which is a terminology that computer scientists typically use to refer to adding something to the front of a list structure or a structure similar to a list. And we have one more of these that we're going to cover right now before, um, and we'll see two different variants of this. Um, along with push, we have our other operation pop. And pop is going to remove something from the front of the line um, and give us the start of the line without that thing there anymore. 
So let's do this again, Tarish. I'm sorry, you're, you're under fire for this operation too. Um, okay, so let's start at um, from the top here. All you need to know to do a pop is the, where the start of the list currently is. And what do we do from here? Uh, so you're going to have to okay. full voice. Okay, so um, uh, I start by creating a pointer old. Yep, we create, we create some temporary memory. Let's use, uh, not Al, but let's use wider for this one. Wider, come over here. You're going to be old, and you'll be a, a node that we're keeping in reserve. Um, then I assert T to assert this. We want to check that the start of the line really exists and that we haven't been handed a null pointer. That seems good. Then I define uh, old as T. So. So this would be Nash. Nash is, Nash is currently P. And we're going to hand over the data inside her. We'll hand over the data to Wida. So that means I have made. Yeah, you yeah. have just made a copy of it. Okay. So you, you still get to keep yours, but Wida has a copy of Nash's uh, student information. Lucky now, Wida. Now I've made a Wida point to Joaquin. Um, no, now at the next stage. Okay. So wider contains uh, the old information. And now p equals p next. So you are p. Oh, OK. So then that means I have to continue and I point. You dereference Nash. And Nash and I go to wider. And you move over to Mahin. Yeah. Yep. So now this front of the list is no longer the front of the list. We can ignore the fact that it was once in memory. And now the next thing we do, um, look at the at line 7. Yeah, so we destroy, destroy this. this stuff over here, our temporary working space, which we destroy that. Means Mahin is now the front of the list. Um, and Mahin is now the front of the list because you're pointing to her, and we have removed an element. So now, Michael, now you're up. Why, when we did this, did we need to set the new list at the end to the results of the pop function? Uh, I'm not quite sure, but I think you will damage the structure, the origin. Well, let's, let's imagine that we didn't do this. And at the end of the function, we've now destroyed these two, but we haven't moved where Tarish is pointing. What would have happened? Um, point to the empty. Yeah, Tarish still would have been pointing to where Nash was standing, uh, that memory over there. But she wouldn't be there. We've already destroyed her using the free command. And so this wouldn't have worked, which would have uh, been our new equals pop old over there. So you have to be careful with the particular way that you implement the linked list to make sure that at the end of an operation that destroys some amount of memory, that you update all the pointers, including the pointer to the start of the list. Because if you remove the start of the list, you've got to be sure that the thing that you're using to keep track of where the list starts now points to the second item. Does that make sense to you? Uh, yeah, it does. Yeah, well, I was about to call for questions, and so that was excellent timing. Six, aren't we like making him pointing? Yeah, so th that is a, a slight catch. The difference is, is that we've got two versions of the front of our list point. We've got one inside the function and one outside the function. So remember uh, our lecture on scope. If inside the function we modify p, outside the function p isn't going to be changed. Well, we may have shuffled the memory around. But see how we're using a value. Uh, look at the look on this side. See how we're using a, a value called list, a variable called list. When we pass list inside, that becomes p, and if we can modify it and change it. But outside, back in the main function, we'll see this more concretely in code a little later. We've got a different variable that's not going to have been affected. So we may have shuffled the memory around, but list still points to the old place that it was pointing. It'll hold on for that. Uh, and if you're still confused at the end of when we've done like a more complete code demo, um, we'll come back. OK, any other questions at this point? Yeah, wider. Uh, actually, I have a set of questions. Why do we need me? <laughs> hmm? Or why do we need old? Uh, did you just create it old to, uh, to have full value and have old destroyed? Yeah. OK. So you need to do that in order to? Uh, you don't. Uh, you need to do that so that at all points, the uh, pointer that you have is valid. 
because if we destroyed or removed this node over here, how would we free it later? So we need to actually keep track of it. Okay, so we need to first assign all to this, and then we can... Yeah. Okay. Um, there was another question. Noah's got a question. We've got all the questions down at the front. Very convenient. No running around with the microphone. Um, I was just wondering about uh, line six. So we're uh, assigning P to P, um, you know, to the next one, the next struct, but because you can copy structs to structs, does P include like the next so P's data as is well? Is P a struct? Or is P's a pointer to a struct? Yeah, so if we set the pointer equal to something, are we copying a struct? Uh, no, so we're copying a pointer. I see. But good point. Oh, yeah, good point for a pointer. Any other questions from anyone who's not down on the front? Oh, sorry. Boshang, what's up? Uh, why are we not bringing the space for the struct that goes with the pointer P? The space that goes with the pointer P? Um, that's, that's what we're doing with the free old on line 7. But aren't you only like bring the space for the pointer, but not the stuff? Free old. Let me let me double check that for a second. Let me think about it. Free old. No. Um, the way free works is free's argument is a pointer to the memory that you want to destroy. So node t old is a pointer, but it's a because it's a pointer that's declared within a function. It's, we haven't declared it using, it's not like a pointer to a pointer. It's a stack variable, which means when that stack frame is destroyed, when we end pop, old as a pointer, old the, the pointer itself, the like string, that gets destroyed automatically. What's not destroyed is the thing that it points to. And that's what we're doing with the free command over there. We're following where old points to and destroying that memory using that link. We can, if you're still confused about it, post on Ed, and it'll probably be easier with a little diagram. No worries. Anything else? This is definitely a little conceptually tricky. Okay, Yara. Um, by this story, you mean the uh, memory is not reserved anymore? Yeah, the memory is not reserved anymore. Um, computer scientists tend to be a little misleading with language when we say like we destroy things with free. You're not destroying the memory. That memory address still exists. Um, it just doesn't belong to us anymore. Oh, sorry. Uh, but the data that was there is still there. It's just that I, the place is not reserved. So Yara has actually opened up for us a wonderful can of worms. Essentially, the question is: When you free memory, sure, it doesn't belong to you anymore. But does the stuff that w is the stuff that was there still there? There are, a few ways, there are a few ways to answer this. One is that on a simple level, yes, the data is still there. The other answer is that the computer might actually reallocate this memory to another program on the computer. So when you try and access it, you might now be accessing memory that another process has been allocated. And uh, so the stuff at that location might be another process's data and might be different. But we know that our operating system also has built-in protections so that it keeps track of, who's, of which memory belongs to who. And so we'd get a seg fault. Yeah, that's true. However, computer security researchers are always looking for ways to kind of subvert these boundaries and maybe access data that might have been left over, that might have been freed but not zeroed out. And using this, let's say you had some important secret that you were storing. And you were done with the secret and wanted to free it so that no one could access it ever again. A pesky computer security researcher might think, ah, I know that it's only been freed, but it hasn't been overwritten, so perhaps there's a way of accessing it. And it turns out that there are a number of ways that you might be able to peek into the memory that's still there that leads to a whole interesting class of computer security bugs, many of which were only discovered in the last four or five years. If you want more information on this, put in, put in an ed question. I'm happy to go into some of those methods. But it's definitely outside the regular scope of the class. However, I really appreciate that question. Yeah. So what exactly are we returning in P? What it, say again? What exactly are we returning in P? In What are we doing in? When we return P. Oh, when we return P, 
we're giving back to, remember that this is just one function that exists in a larger program. Um, and we want to let the larger program know where the new start of the list is. Because the start of the list isn't where the start of the list was. Like if we returned uh, Nash's position over here, Nash's memory address, there's nothing there anymore. So the main function needs to know what your address is because you're now the start of the list. So at the, at the end of the function, we return your address to the function so that the main function, or whatever it was that just called you, called pop, knows where you are. And that's the, the crux of why we use the first way to call it and not the second way to call it. Because the, um, we, the main program needs to know the location of the new list. Getting there? Yeah, but how is it, how does new not have the same location as the old one? How does new not have, well, because this, we probably don't have time to keep answering it now, um, so we'll have to do it for Ed, but hold, hold on for when we do a full code demo and it might be a little clearer. More questions? No, it's that box I can't see from here. Litho? And I think last one, and then we have to move on. Uh, are all of like the variables that you made in this function in the stack frame? Yeah, all of these variables are in the stack frame. The only time that it wouldn't be on the stack is if you explicitly use the word malloc over here. Um, so all of these variables, oh, there's a catch. Um, so anything that we have declared in this stack frame, anything that we have declared in here is, in, is stored in the stack. But some of the variables in here were passed to us. So you'll notice uh, node t p, that is a variable that's come, that we're being given, and the pointer might point to some memory that has been dynamically allocated. So the stuff inside p is probably gonna have been generated using malloc, but node t old is inside our stack frame, and so that point is gonna get destroyed. This is gonna get pretty confusing quickly, um, just talking about it, so when we get to the code demo tomorrow, hopefully you'll get a little more clarification. But the thing to remember is there is a difference between the pointer and the thing the pointer is pointing to. The pointer itself might be allocated on the stack, whereas the thing that it's pointing to might be a location on the heap. A pointer can either point to, to something somewhere in the stack, or it can point to something in the heap, or something somewhere else in memory, although you'd uh, get into some trouble very quickly if you did that. Does that make a little bit of sense? Uh, oh yeah, because I was just wondering, because um, old is like a variable there, right? Yeah, old is a variable that we have created in this function. But like if you create, um, wouldn't you make like it's not contiguous to the stack frame and memory? So old, we haven't actually destroyed old. What we've destroyed or deallocated is the thing that old is pointing to. So old is still a variable that's located on our stack, it's a pointer, but the thing that old points to is the thing that we're deallocating. Got it, kind of? So. <laughs> For the moment. Um, and I think with that, given what we've been through today, um, we'll take a round of applause for our volunteers. Thank you, everyone. Um, and we'll leave it there. Um, I am going to post something online if you want to watch, um, like a brief supporting message. Um, but for anyone else who wants to talk about some of what we discussed at the very start, or if you have questions about linked lists that we haven't yet gotten up to uh, resolving, feel free to come down and talk to us. John Jong Lim and I will still be here for a couple minutes. Thank you very much, everyone.